My name is Sabrina Foldy, and this is my sound effects demo using the Wise Adventure game. I'll describe my process, and then share some of the trickier implementation in Wise. First, I chose to work on the cave area, and I played the game while connected to the Wise profiler to log all the events. Then I created my asset list with the concepts and sounds for each of the events. I used my own recordings with the Tascam DR40, as well as sample libraries, I cleaned the sounds in Audacity, and I did my design work in Ableton. This game is a fun quest, and so I wanted the sound design to have a sense of magic, while retaining the realism of the cave space and the forest outside. For the woodlands reverb, I used a wise room verb and a low-pass filter to create the sense of a forest space. I designed the daytime ambience with samples of birds and added the campfire sample. The graphic style of the game made me want to add some musical elements to the effects too. I designed the nighttime ambience using frogs and owls, and I made sure that day blends into night gradually with crossfades. For the cave and its entrance, I used a wise delay and room verb, but with different settings for the two areas, since the cave is a large resonant space and the entrance is smaller. I wanted the cave to sound creepy with some evil lurking inside, but I also wanted realistic environmental sounds, so I used samples of wind, a water fountain, and raindrops. I designed the crystal sound with the Ableton instrument Chimes Finger and a cyclic wave sample with pitch increase and looping. In WISE, the crystal sound is a 3D emitter with a low-pass filter, and its pitch lowers as the player moves away. Raising the pitch of the crystal as the player approaches helps to draw her to the cave. When she picks up the mushrooms and the crystal shards, I use the Ableton instrument Metal Glass. For her footsteps on grass, I stepped on old cassette tape. For dirt, I stepped on gravel outside. For her footsteps on stone, I stepped on tile. For her walk sounds in water, I decreased the pitch in wise, since they'd be slower than her running. Because she's moving through the water with most of her body, I wanted swishy sounds, not steps. So I recorded my hand moving through water, and I decreased the resonance of my sink by putting the water in a plastic tray. The game triggers the stone impacts when the monster is hit. For the pickaxe and sword hits, the volume depends on the state of the swing type, so the right swing is a little quieter and the top swing is a little louder. The low-pass filter and pitch are affected by the level of destruction. For both weapons, there are a few sounds. For the metallic hit layer, I used a recording of a thick metal hook hitting an iron tap. For bass energy, I added a thud sample. The crunch is from footsteps in snow, the metal scrape is a sword slash, and there's some resonance from the Ableton instrument Clouds and Bells. For both weapon swings, I used samples of axe swings, but in Wise, the pickaxe swings have a low pass filter and a pitch decrease, while the sword swings have a high pass filter and a pitch increase. In Wise, her voice and the weapon swings play together based on her level of exertion and the weapon type but her voice is set to play only 70% of the time, to avoid repetition. For her weapon inventory, I used samples of a click and a camera shutter. I considered that the monster is made of rock, but his movements should sound ethereal since he hovers. When the monster telegraphs, the first sound we hear is a whoosh sound with a high pass filter and a spooky ambient sample with EQ and a flanger. Then there is a zombie growl. And finally, the monster is shaking and about to explode, so I recorded myself rattling and scraping rocks together. I took different sections of these samples, made three groups for each sound, and increased the pitch of each group, so each was a major third apart. So the sound is a rattle that increases in pitch and sounds like it's getting more intense. When the monster just hovers, it's similar to the telegraph hover, but it's longer, and I added a magic sounding sample that I pitched down and used a high pass filter. I looped this in Wise, and the volume increases as the monster moves faster, but it decreases as the player moves further away. I designed the monster bite with a techno kick, an apple bite, and a potato chip crunch, which I pitched down. 
I also used zombie saliva samples and samples of sword slashing. To keep the monster's voice consistent throughout the game, I used various zombie samples for all of his dialogue. The monster's death is the zombie growl, as well as an impact sample. And I placed a small delay on the growl, so it's heard later, and only some of the time. The player getting bit is also two sounds. It's her voice and her body getting hit. For her voice, I used recordings of my own voice. The impact is a layering of a thud sample and the crunchy wet sounds of fish impacts, and a recording of myself hitting a jacket with a heavy metal hook. I also used my own voice for when she swings a weapon. As her health declines, we hear her heartbeat. Her heartbeat plays when her health is below half, and the sound is split into two, so as her health decreases, her heart beats slightly faster, gets louder, and the effects of a low-pass filter are increased. But there is a bug in this game preventing the player death event from being called, so I created a switch group for her death and heartbeat, and attached it to a player health parameter. Then I found at what numeric value of health her death sound would sync with her death in the game. I hope you enjoyed my demo reel! Thanks for watching!